How is what's happening in Spain, in Catalan, at the moment going to play out? And if there is any role for the European Union, what should it be? Joining me is Stephen Wolf and Florent Marchalese. And Florent, perhaps we'll start with you. How do you see this ending? What's going to be, what's going to be the developments in the next hours, next few days, next weeks? Well, we don't see any end right now. What we see that's uh, hours by hours, uh, seeing what uh, what's happening, and uh, really what we know that's a very confused situation and that's a very ambiguous situation because yesterday what the president of the Catalan government, Puigdemont, said, for example, was confusing because he declared independence and then he suspended the independence. So you can imagine for the people living in Catalonia, was, uh, I am in Spain or I am in Catalonia? We, we, we still don't know. And this morning we had the declaration of, of Rajoy, the president of the Spanish government, saying that he required to push them on, some acclaration about the independence, yes or no. But what we see that uh, right now we have, or we want some days, we want some days, and we need some days to have some dialogue. So I think if you look at that from a diplomatic point of view, that's a good news because we have some more times mm. to put the things on the table and to have less emotions and more politics. In terms of this idea of dialogue, now the central governments rejected the notion of any form of independence of Catalonia. And, and you, the Prime Minister has been quoted as saying, we are going to stop independence from taking place. Um, as such, I can say to you with complete candor that this is not going to happen. It doesn't leave much room for the negotiations and mediation to take place, though. It's a fundamental no, difference you, of opinion. There's a lot of negotiation possible because we have two uh, radicalized uh, positions, uh, the no independence and the independence, and you have a lot of things that you can do between uh, both things. For example, beginning by uh, reform of the constitution, the Spanish constitution, to have a very uh, a real federal state. So I think that you have a lot of ways possible, but both more radicalized uh, positions have to accept to negotiate something that can be a medium position. Stephen, let's go to you here. I mean, Obviously, we're looking at it from the outside, and indeed, as we are in the European Parliament here, looking at it from the outside. Um, in terms of you know what you see as the developments going, and where do you see this heading and going? Do you, I mean, do you think that we're going to see a, an independent Catalonia in, in some form? My personal view is I can't see an independent Catalonia in the form that the people who voted in that referendum really expected. And the main reason for that being? Uh, and the main reason for that is the political pressures that will be applied on Puigdemont and, and his fellow uh, supporters from this place, the European Union, and the way that they did in Greece, uh, the way that they're trying to do in Brexit, will become so strong that in the end they will capitulate to their original dream. And I, I believe that they will find some sort of uh, middle ground that will try and persuade those Catalonian people that you've really got what you wanted. You're in Spain, you've got a little bit more independence, and you're still in the EU. But that won't satisfy the vast majority of those who voted to leave. So some form of sort of devolution of, or further powers you're seeing, some, some token to show that there is further independence. I suspect. I mean, don't forget, I, I, I'm born in a country that managed to achieve this both with Scotland and to an extent with, with Northern Ireland, with devolved, uh, devolved uh, uh, parliaments down Assembly, into those so. countries which we didn't have before. But it hasn't stopped the SNP growing significantly and pushing, pushing and pushing historically for more independence. And that's why we have some real problems in the UK. Yeah. Although obviously the SNP arguably is on its way down rather than on its way up. I just want to come back to you, um, Florent. In terms of you know, what you see the, the, the whole Catalan independence argument going, is it going to go away in the sense of, let's assume that there isn't going to be this complete break there is going to be some form of negotiation, some form of to and fro in the next few weeks, next few days. This is something which is going to rumble on. There is no real, you know, complete and utter peace to be made here. No, they, they won't go away at 100%, but if you look at the majority of the, uh, the Catalan society, for example, I think they can accept, they can accept a, a medium position mm -hmm. because yeah. the independentists, they are not more than 20, 25, the real one, but one independence from historical, emotional mm -hmm. reasons. But then you have this big part of the society, for example, that is really uh, wanted a, a dialogue and really wants, for example, a referendum with, uh, with guarantees uh, accorded, for example, with the Spanish government. So that's uh, really the core of the, the 
Catalan society because I think that's something that we have to understand about the Catalan society. We don't have all the Catalan people being independentists. That's not the case. We have a real division inside the, the Catalan society. You have a 50-50 right now. So what we need, that's not Catalan, Catalan, uh, the Catalan society, Catalan government against uh, the, the Spain, that's Catalonian against Catalonian. Yeah, I mean, the referendum result, though, although it was on a turnout of, what, 40-something percent, did indicate that there was a strong majority for independence within Catalonia. But in terms of, let's just have a look at the, the EU viewpoint here. The EU's taken some criticism in the past few days with regards to its response to what's happening in Spain, particularly with regards to the police actions uh, regarding the independence referendum itself. Do you see there being any role in the, of the EU in this, this whole debate? Should there be a stronger voice coming from a European level here? Yeah, I think so. As Greens, we asked uh, and we called the European Commission to, uh, to uh, mediate and to uh, mm. uh, s do something uh, between the Spanish government and the Catalan government because we have the capacity to do something and because the Catalan issue is a European issue because that remembers also a lot of things that happened before in the European Union. So I think that the European Commission has something to, to, uh, play to uh, yeah. a role to play. But I don't know how we have, they have to do that. Do we have to do that on the public face, for example, in the public opinion? Or we have to do that on the background. I don't know, in the back of his uh, mediation. I don't care, but we have to do something.